just by knowing who's behind it and why. And then just don't do it if you can possibly get away from it. But the white supremacists, oh, they, they have decided that in the refinement stage of white supremacy that uh, more and more dark-skinned people throughout the world are beginning to become, after many, many, many millenniums, you might say, in a way of speaking, of just being kind of lethargic and out of it, you might say, and primitive, uh, pitiful people, just world beggars, really. And uh, some black people, some dark-skinned people, some people who are classified as non-white throughout the world started in the 1960s to kind of stir and say, enough already. Maybe we should become a different people. Maybe we should not be so primitive. Maybe we should be problem solvers because we usually know how to make a lot of problems. We don't know how to solve the problems that we make or solve the problems that other people make for us. So in the 1960s, people began to stir all over the world, non-white people, and began to use their brains rather than just use emotion to try to solve problems. Because black people particularly have been taught, well, you know, use your emotions. If you run into a problem, just start screaming and yelling. I mean, you know, and hope that it will all work out. Uh, if you lose your way going down the highway, just close your eyes and step on the gas and hope that it all works out. And uh, But don't use your brain. That's for the white supremacists to do. You've been given a brain, but just forget about the brain. Be body people. Don't be brain people. Be body people. Keep your body moving, even if you don't know where you're going. Just run around bumping into things. And if you bump into some more, into some black people while you're moving around, uh, then lash out at them on account of they bumped into you and you bumped into them. And just keep doing that because that's a part of my plan for you forever because then I can always control you. But then the dark-skinned people start waking up and they start saying, we got to come up with a sophisticated way to have them participate in going back to sleep. And so we will use chemicals to do that. We no longer want to just run them down, I mean, you know, and beat them with clubs and shoot them with guns. That wakes them up. That keeps them alert. That makes them want to do something constructive. That makes their brain work at a certain level. So we don't want their brains to work at all. So what's the best way to do that? Make chemicals appealing. Give it some fancy name. Call it. Harlem Sonata, and put it in a pink pill and tell them that's the latest thing and that you're not very intelligent if you don't go out and get some right now. You won't be on the cutting edge of what's happening because black people always want to know what's happening because we're always looking for something new because we're so desperate and for something different to happen from what has happened. So the white supremacists always has something new for us. But it's always destructive. I don't care how it looks on the surface. They don't hand out things. They don't come and knock on your door to give you something. Unless, without you, if you're really thinking, you should be saying, uh-oh, what are they up to now? They're coming to me. Usually, if they're coming to me, they're giving me something that really is not going to help me do anything constructive. If it's anything constructive, I have to run them down, trying to find them to help me do anything constructive. And when they see me coming, they run from me. But when they come and knock on your door and say, I have something for you people, just for you people that's just wonderful, and you need to take it, always jump back. Don't jump forward. Mm -hmm. Jump back and take a look at it and say, wait a minute, what is this? And if I buy into it, What's going to be the result? What is this you say you are doing for me? 